All right, guys, welcome back to the Wake Surf Board Build Part 2. Uh, after letting the foam sit for about seven days with the glue, uh, I decided to actually get through and cut it out. The shape of the board, I came up on my own, kind of looking after what I've seen online and what I kind of wanted to build. I cut the big chunk off using a machete and then the rest of it using the reciprocating saw and then did some little hand cuts with the blade to try and get it as straight as possible. Here I'm tracing the side silhouette of the board that I kind of came up with just guessing off of some uh, specs that I had seen online for wake surf boards. So here I'm setting the router with the largest bit that I had at the time, which was only I think about a quarter inch. I went to the store after this to get a the three eighths, which was much better in getting more of this foam out. As you guys can see, the router made a huge mess and I realized that I should probably go through and shape the entire side before uh, cutting out the silhouette so I would be cutting off less foam and I'd have a better way of knowing what the side silhouette and how deep I was supposed to be going through the entire thing. So I started out with the router and it was just a complete mess and doing it off the ground was way too difficult. Um, Tried using a couple things, the machete, that was way too dangerous, so I stopped doing that, and I moved on to the planer, but the most the planer could actually extend out was 1 16th of an inch, so where the router would extend probably about a three quarters of an inch down, I'd have to basically make 16 passes in order to get that same distance. So I tried doing that for a bit, and then I eventually moved back to the router just because it was so much quicker, even though it was messier. Um, I eventually moved the board up to some sawhorses, which made it way easier to get this done. Uh, yeah. At this point, I was trying to see if I could do larger chunks using this kind of multi-tool that I had laying around, but the blade itself is three inches, where the actual cutting length is maybe only about an inch, maybe less. So as I was going through, the amount of time that it would take to get this entire thing cut out just took way too long. So I went through and just kind of cleaned up the little chunks that I could. I went back to the router for this last portion just to get those ridges down because I knew I wasn't going to be able to router at a consistent depth like I was across the other portions where there was foam at least completely across the top on one side. I decided it'd be a good idea to trace over the silhouette onto the second side so that I had an angle to look at from both sides rather than just from one. And I could also try to make the board as flat as possible and as even as possible. Yeah, once the board got down to a thickness that I was kind of not too comfortable routing out, I just used a planer so I can kind of get a little bit more of the curve and more little nuances into the board as much as I could. For the bottom of the board, I was kind of reckless with the router just because I knew that taking those chunks off would be really easy and then I could come back with the planer and clean them all up afterwards. Once I got the board down really close to the lines that I had drawn, I broke out the sander at, with about a 60 grit and really got in there to take down and kind of get the contours as good as I could. 
All right, guys, stay tuned for the next video where I'm going to get into shaping the rails, setting the fin boxes, and almost having a complete failure in this build with a really big epoxy scare.